Excuse me. I've had feelings for you for a while now. Will you be my boyfriend? One day after work, I was cleaning up the restaurant when Nene Haragora called me over to confess her feelings for her. And so I said, I'm sorry, I can't date you, Miss Haragora. I knew I would never feel the same. I felt bad, but I had to decline. Huh? I must have heard you, Vang. You didn't just say no to me, right? Yes, I did. Why would you say that? Look at me. I am so pretty. All the guys at my university were killed to have a date with me. She's right. She is pretty. She's probably one of the prettiest girls I know. However, I also know that she has a horrible personality. She acts like a good girl and seems friendly, but I know what she does to the other part-time workers here. I've heard her talk badly about some of the customers as well. She's crooked-minded. I've talked to her many times, but she hasn't tried to improve her actions. It's as if she thinks she's justified to do anything just because she's pretty. I'm sorry, I, I think there are better people out there for you. You should find a better man instead of an ordinary restaurant manager like me. <laughs> what the heck? That's your reason? Do you realize I went out of my way to ask you out? Ugh, she is so full of herself. I'll ask you one more time. Are you sure you don't want to date me? Yes, I'm sure. That's my final answer. I see. Okay, she's starting to accept my answer. She crushed that thought when she said, Fine then, but I'm going to make you regret your decision. What? I guess I'll be heading home now then. Wait, what do you mean? I didn't like the smile on her face. It was as if she was planning something evil. The next morning, I found out why she said I would regret my decision. What? You all want to quit? Most of the part-time workers at the restaurant came up to me together. They told me they were all planning to quit their jobs. Yes, we can't work with someone like you. But why? We heard about what you did to Nene last night. How could you force yourself on her? What? <laughs> Whoa. Is she seriously doing this? She's coming up with stories to get back at me for dumping her yesterday? I always thought you and Nana were closer than the rest of us, but that doesn't mean you can do things like that to her. Hey, take it easy! I didn't do anything to her! Well then, what the heck is this? The part-timer took out a phone to show me a picture of me grabbing Ms. Haraguro. I don't know who edited the photo, but they're good. The photo looked real. Um, this isn't real. Plus, where is the person who took the photo? I'm the one who took the photo. The girl who said that was a close friend of Miss Haraguro's. I remember them telling me they went to the same university. You were acting all suspicious yesterday. You told Nana to come to the bathroom alone. I followed you guys, and I saw what you were doing. You saw the proof. You won't get away with this. You should feel lucky. Nana is willing to forget all about it as long as you pay her. Uh, pay her? Yeah, it's better than getting arrested, isn't it? Still, I can't imagine myself working with a monster like you. We're quitting. So you won't even hear me out? To be honest, I didn't want to believe at first. But now that I've seen the picture, I know I can't trust anything you say. Okay, but you guys need to go through the proper process to quit. Yeah, we close the place down for two weeks. That way we can leave the place without having to work with you. What? That's crazy. Let me explain the situation you're in. If you don't listen to us, we'll do what we need to make you listen. I stopped trying the moment I heard that. They wouldn't listen even if I did. <laughs> How does that make you feel? This is what you get for dumping me. I could almost hear her saying that. Gosh, she's such a nightmare. Ah, what do I do now? They were fixated on making me pay. I'm sure they'll be back again to collect the money. I'll have to deal with that then. But for now, I should focus on the restaurant. All but one of the part-timers quit. I should call Miss Shiragami, the only part-timer left, to tell her what happened. I bet she's going to quit when she hears the story. Hey, boss. I was supposed to see Miss Shiragami enter the kitchen that afternoon. Hey, Miss Shiragami? I thought I told you not to come today. I heard what happened from the part-timer. 
I see. I knew it. You're hurt. I'm gonna make her pay for what she did to you. Huh? I didn't catch what you were saying. Can you say it again? Oh, it's nothing. I just wanted to tell you that I know you're innocent. Huh? How? I witnessed Nena asking you out yesterday. I also heard her threaten to get revenge on you. Really? Oh, it would mean so much if you could explain what you saw. No, that's not a good idea. But why? I know it won't be difficult to explain what happened to the others. However, by doing that, we'll be putting Nena in the spotlight. Um, why is that a bad thing? After all she did to you, she deserves more than just a scolding by the others. I want to make her regret what she did. I want her to drown in the feelings of despair. But is that even possible? It's possible for me, but I need to lure her into my trap. That's why I don't want the other part-time workers to know anything yet. The others are unforgivable too. How dare they suspect you to do such a horrendous thing! But I need them to come back so the restaurant can function. Well, I have a suggestion. A suggestion? How about you let my sisters work here? They're only sophomores, but... They're both cheerful and friendly. They're fit for the job. Oh, you have sisters! Oh, I'd love for them to work here if that's what they want. I appreciate it. They're both noisy and a handful, but they're good-hearted. They won't cause any trouble. The Shirogami is so calm and mature. I can't imagine noisy sisters. Can we set up a date to meet them? Well, I brought them with me today. Huh? Hello, hello! I'm Mew. I'm Sora. Are you the one in charge here? Wow, you're just like Shizu described. You look nice. Shizu likes nice guys like you. Oh, uh, hi. You silly girls, stop chattering. And don't go so close to him. Oh, you're being unfair. Shizu, you need to learn to share. That's enough. <laughs> it's nice to see such bright attitudes in here. I apologize. Don't, they seem kind, just like you. <gasps> um, uh, anyways, now that my sisters are here, it might be confusing to call us by our last names. Yeah, that's true. You can call me Shizuka. The one with her hair tied on the right is Miyu. And the one tying her hair on the left is Misora. Okay, this is going to be confusing for me. Misora, did you hear that? Shizu's using us to make him call us by our first names, so she can get closer to him. I did, Miyu. I wouldn't expect any less from Shizu. You guys, don't you realize I can hear you? You better watch it when we get home. Eek! <clears throat> well, I guess we've cleared up the name problem. Okay, as long as you're fine with it, Miss Shirogami. Uh... Oh, uh, Shizuka-san. We don't have to use honorifics. Well, it may be a little inappropriate. Hmm... Masora, look! She's just puffing her cheeks! I see it, Miu. She's acting like a little baby. Shizu always acts maturely, but I bet she's still a little baby inside. I agree. She can't even drink coffee because it's too bitter for her. Hey, you two. This is your last warning. Eek! Sh Shizu, you should be nice to your little sisters. That's right. We're your cute sisters. Uh, eek! They get along so well. I'm jealous. You are all high school students, so you have classes. I guess I need to find somebody who can work the morning shifts. Yes, that's true. I don't think our parents will let us skip school to work here. Dad and Mom are so strict. Yeah, they're so annoying. <laughs> it's okay, I have some friends I could ask for help. Maybe they can help if it's just for a short time. Friends? Are they girls? Huh? Yes, why? I see. Is something wrong? It's nothing, don't worry about it. I'll ask around to see if others are willing to help as well. It's okay, it's too much to ask from you. No, it's not. I have friends who are excellent bakers. suzuka san looked confident when she said that. A few days later, she brought two women with her. One of them was her cousin, and the other was the cousin's friend. They are both housewives now, but they have experience working at a cake shop and a cafe. I was relieved to hear they were experienced. 
However, Shizuka-san looked shocked when she saw her cousin's friend. But I have no idea why. The next few days were amazing. We were getting more customers than ever. The twins were a big hit among the customers. Everyone also commented on how delicious the cake Shizuka-san's cousin made were. The cousin's friend used to be the part-time leader. So she coordinated everything professionally, which made things sail smoothly. We're getting more customers by the day. It's all thanks to your support, Shizuka-san. I didn't do anything special. Plus, many of the customers are here to drink your coffee and enjoy the meals you make. Thanks, that means a lot. No problem. It was surprising to see how easy it was to talk to Shizuka-san. She was always so quiet. I think I might have fallen for her if she wasn't a high school student. That's how comfortable I felt around her. <laughs> I wonder how that pathetic manager is doing right now. I bet he's feeling hopeless since he can't open up his restaurant. I'm going to take all of his money. He probably has a lot saved since the restaurant was doing well before I quit. How much should I ask for? What? They're open? What the... What's going on? I expected the restaurant to be dark and empty, but the place was overflowing with the customers. This is unbelievable. How did he manage to do this? Hi there. Table for one? Yes. Would you like to order lighter? Um, well, can you go get the manager for me? The manager? I'm so sorry, things are a bit hectic right now. He's busy cooking in the kitchen. Is there something you would like me to tell him? No. You need to get him now. Tell him Nene Haraguro is here. He'll know who I am. Haraguro? What? Oh, it's nothing. He wasn't thinking about how rude you are at all. What? I'll go get the manager for you. I wasn't expecting you to come back so soon. Miyu came rushing into the kitchen to call me. And I was shocked to hear Miss Haraguro was here. Seriously, how could you show her face here? Oh, whatever. I see you've done a fantastic job rebuilding your employee system. <laughs> no thanks to you. I am truly relieved to see how well you're doing. Now I know you have the money to pay me. Let me make one thing clear. I'm not putting up with your lies. I'm not going to pay you anything, Miss Haraguro. Are you sure about that? Did you forget I have proof? You see, I can just scream right here and your life will be over in a second. You're horrible. You need to pay me. If you don't want me to throw you in jail, let's see. I'll forgive you once you pay me 5 million yen. What? I think it's rather reasonable, considering your restaurant and your whole life are on the line. I've never met anyone as rotten as her. That's... Just ridiculous. What? Shizuka-san. Suddenly, Shizuka-san butted into our conversation. I thought she was cooking in the kitchen. What do you want, Shizuka? You're interrupting our conversation. I had to butt in. I'm worried you're having ridiculous hallucinations. Hallucinations? I have proof to show what he did. You must be an idiot. That picture is photoshopped. Excuse me, everybody. The waitress just accused me of lying. Hey, Miss Haraguro! She opened her mouth and shouted out to all the customers in the restaurant. I could tell she was trying to get the customers to believe the employees here were disrespectful. How could someone be so selfish and cruel? This girl and the manager used to bully me when I worked here. Okay, Nena, if you keep this up, we will be suing you for disrupting the business. Huh. I'd like to see you try it. I'll show everybody the picture of the manager making a move on me. Go ahead. Huh? I said, you go right ahead and do that. You can't be serious. You guys will be in serious trouble. I am being serious. Let me warn you, though. My parents are both lawyers. What? On top of that, my grandfather is the superintendent general. I'm looking forward to this fight. Oh my gosh! That's the most pathetic lie I've ever heard! I'm sorry to tell you, it's true. You can look him up if you want. Oh, and... I have to warn you about one more thing. I have a video of the whole conversation between you and the manager. A video of you threatening the manager because you dumped him! What? You little... How dare you! Why don't we compare? I wonder which one is more believable. A photoshopped picture or a video with the time and date. You... You're such a creep! I can't believe you taped us! Well, since I know what kind of person you are, I knew you would try something when the manager dumped you. I couldn't let you hurt him. Screw you! You moron! 
you screwed up my whole plan! Oh, come on. Did you think the professionals wouldn't see right through your photoshopped photo? Your plan was a mess to start with. Ugh, you've crossed the line, Shizuka! You better watch your back from now on! Well, you're free to do whatever you want. But only if you're okay with me sending this video to all of your friends at university. Miyu handed a phone over to Shizuka-san. Shizuka-san pressed play to start the video. The video of Miss Haraguro and my conversation started playing. What? What? You didn't think I was telling the truth? You should be glad. All your friends will know the real you. You won't have to hide how hideous you are anymore. No, wait! Stop, please! You know what you should do if you want to keep this video private. <gasps> but, wait! I won't ask you to apologize to the manager. I know you won't meet it anyways. However, I will ask you to stay away from the restaurant and the manager. If you ever come close, your video will be leaked to the entire world. <gasps> I've never seen Miss Araguro so terrified and helpless. She had no choice but to admit she was wrong. She sold her way out the door. That was unbelievable. You can't be a high school student. That was too good. Oh, well, now that it's over, I'm a little embarrassed. Yeah, don't be. You saved my career and my life. But why did you go so far for me? Well, it's because I have feelings for you. What? I've always had feelings for you. That's why I couldn't stand watching you get beaten by those horrible girls. You didn't deserve it. What? I can not my surprise. It was just so unexpected. Shizuka-san was telling me she liked me? You didn't seem to like me like that. I did my best to hide it. I didn't want you to find out, because I wanted to keep working here to be by your side. But I don't think I could keep it in anymore. You don't know how happy it made me when we were cooking in the kitchen together. Every time we talk, my heart starts racing. I know I'm still young, but I want to be your girlfriend. Shizuka-san? Well, I wanted to ask the same thing. Shizuka-san, well, I wanted to ask you the same thing. Uh, really? Yep. Yeah, I realized it was the happiest when you were by my side. And I know how kind and caring you are. This is insane! I'm the luckiest girl in the world! Shizuka-san jumped into my arms as she said that. That's how we finally started dating. I know there's a wide age gap and it's not an issue we can ignore, but I promised myself I would do everything I can to make her the happiest girl in the world. We had forgotten all about the customers sitting around us. We finally realized you weren't alone when they all started clapping and cheering for us. The Hideyama High School Tennis Club is all about results. Nothing else matters. Although I am uncoordinated, I worked hard to overcome my clumsiness. I somehow became a regular member, and it felt nice to see my hard work finally paying off. However, your right knee will get better but you're going to need more time to fully recover. Even if you do continue, we can't keep you as a regular member. It was like when a big wave washes away the sandcastle you've been building for so long. After that, my father was transferred to another location for his work, and I left Hideyama High School. My name is Hayato Suzukaze. It's nice to meet you all. I returned to my hometown. My new school was called Yuki Gakuen. There, I met. What? Hayato, you're back? Um, who? I'm Enna. Enna Sasaki. Do you remember me? We used to play back in elementary school. Enna Sasaki. She was my childhood friend, but we were separated when I moved. You're so tall now. Oh, I... I guess. And you're so handsome. Really? Um, so... Ahem, Anna? We're still in the middle of homeroom. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just got so excited. I'll forgive you if you sit down now. Hayato, you can sit in that seat at the back of the classroom. The one by the window. Okay. Anna started telling all our classmates stories from the past, and I was already feeling uneasy about reuniting with her. Seriously, Hayato is the nicest, coolest guy you'll ever meet! Hey, Anna! Get off! Hey guys, I'm going to the bathroom. Do you want to tag along? No, no, you stay right there. 
I left the classroom because I needed a break from her. <sighs> it's so tiring, talking to all those people. I didn't have many friends since my father's job required us to move around a lot. I wasn't used to gathering around and chatting with people. After spending some time on the school rooftop, I heard somebody approach me. I turned around expecting it to be Anna, but it turned out to be a boy. You're the new guy, right? He was glaring at me. I heard you're Anna's childhood friend. Don't get too full of yourself, okay? I wasn't planning on it. Whatever, this is my territory, so you better watch it. He didn't tell me his name. He just warned me and stomped off. After I came back to the classroom, I pretended nothing happened between the guy and me. I didn't want Anna to get worried about me. That took a while. Number two? No. Number one. You drink way too much water then. Give me a break. That afternoon, Anna stopped me as I was leaving the school. Hayato, are you going home? Aren't you joining any activity clubs? Oh, I still have some unpacking to do. I already told the coach I'll be starting tomorrow. One of the rules at Yuki Gakuen was that all students had to join an after-school activity club. So, which club are you joining? I was thinking tennis. What? The tennis club? I'm in the tennis club! I played soft tennis in middle school, and I started playing regular tennis in high school. I see. Now that the upperclassmen are gone, I'm the captain of the team. Uh, you shouldn't be late if you're the captain. Oh, oh no! You're right! I'm so excited we'll be in the same club activity! Aren't we separated by gender? Still, you'll be there! We'll get to be together all day! Anna left with a broad smile on her face, but I didn't understand why she was so excited. Oh my gosh, the first day of school is so tiring. Oh, this is... I went straight home to finish unpacking my stuff. I found a toy necklace inside one of my boxes. Anna gave it to me back when we were kids as a goodbye gift. Promise me, you'll never forget about me. Of course, we'll meet again. It's been five years. It's nice to know Anna never forgot about me. It made me feel warm inside. The next afternoon, I changed into my uniform and headed out to the tennis courts. I saw Anna in her uniform waving to me. Hey, Hayato! You're here! Yep. What do you think? I look good, huh? I guess. Just then, the guy who warned me on the school rooftop the previous day came up to us. You guys! These courts are here for tennis players! Stop fooling around! Ryunosuke... So, his name is Ryunosuke, and Anna seems to know him. Dude, why are you here? I'm joining the tennis club. What? You are? What about you? I'm Ryunosuke Togawa, the captain of the boys' tennis club. So you're here because of Anna, aren't you? No, this was unplanned. It's true! This was a coincidence! Yeah, right. I don't believe you. Are you an experienced player? Well, kind of. Oh! Were you a regular member? No, a sub. Seriously? This sucks. We don't need any more dead waiters in this club. Dead waiter? Our team is a meritocracy. We call the useless players dead waiters since they're no good. Oh, come on. You're the only one who uses that name, you know, Ske. If you ask me, everyone in this club is a dead waiter except me. I see. Ryunosuke only judges people on how well they play tennis. You shouldn't be flirting with your buddy right now! You should be training to be better, so your team can finally win enough matches to go to bigger competitions! <laughs> You're just upset because I dumped you, and I know you've been hitting on my club members behind my back. I also know they dumped you as well. Ugh! Just because you're pretty doesn't mean you can act that way towards me! I see. So these two don't get along well. Usually, they fall in love eventually in anime, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. Hey, you guys? Huh? What? Shouldn't we start practicing already? I didn't see him coming. He moved in between us so fast. 
Hey, transfer student! You'll be doing the miscellaneous work with the underclassmen! Ryunosuke stormed off after leaving that last comment. I was left with Anna, and we looked at each other awkwardly. So, he's the captain. Ryunosuke has been playing soccer since he was little, and I admit he's a skilled player. It's just... He has a rotten personality? Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Just as I expected, I was forced to do chores for the players for the next four days. I wasn't allowed in the tennis courts, and he wouldn't even let me hold a tennis racket. However, it didn't bother me since I was still recovering from my knee injury. Anna came over to check up on me every time she had a break. She seemed worried about me. Hey, Hayato, can I help? No, it's okay. I'm actually enjoying this. It's so unfair. What a jerk. This isn't a meritocracy. He's just a tyrant. The rookie's match is this Saturday. Don't you want to practice? It's okay. I'm satisfied with what I'm doing right now. Plus, I should tell Anna about my knee. Uh, no, she'll get worried if she finds out I'm injured. Plus, it feels nice to be helping everybody. Someone has to do it. We can practice together after everyone goes home if you want. It's okay. You don't have to do that for me. Thanks, though. But the workies match! Wouldn't Ryunosuke get angry if he sees you talking to me again? Whatever. I don't care what he thinks. Damn it! Why does Anna keep giving him attention like that? She'll see what a loser he is at the rookies match! <laughs> the next day, I noticed Ryunosuke was in a cheerful mood. Hey, guys! The rookie match is coming up. I'll let you dead waiters practice. It was three days before the rookies match, and Ryunosuke finally allowed the 14 sub members to practice on the tennis courts. However, he told all of us we were only allowed to use one court. How are 14 players supposed to practice on one court? All the sub members were amateurs who started playing in high school. They had almost no experience since Ryunosuke never let them practice on the courts. However, I could see they were doing the best they could. We worked together to make the best of the little time we had to practice. <laughs> You're doing well for a dead waiter, but what a shame. You're a loser no matter how much you practice. What do you mean? You'll never win practicing like that. I understand we need to practice to win since that's what we're here for. But Captain, isn't it also important to encourage fellow teammates to build a stronger bond? What? Are you talking back to me? Hey, Rinosuke, are you picking on Hayato again? No, I'm not! Seriously, stop coming here! Go back to where you belong! It's so unfair of you to ban them from practicing until three days before the match! You're not even trying to give them a chance! If you don't like the way I'm doing things, why don't you prove to me your way is better by winning? What? Your everybody is equal nonsense is why you girls never win a tournament! Hey, Captain. Did you ever consider making the team stronger as a whole, so we can all benefit from it? That's an unrealistic idea. It never works out that way. What's the point of letting dead waiters practice? They won't get better anyway. But we joined the tennis club to play tennis. Who do you think you are? You're just a newbie. Just shut your mouth. Fine. Will you listen to what I have to say if I win the rookies match on Saturday? Don't get ahead of yourself, loser. I'd love to see you try, though. How about this? I'll let you become captain if you win the rookies match. Great. If I lose, I'll keep doing what I do until I graduate. Or you can make me quit if that's what you want. <sighs> Don't forget, you're the one who suggested it. Fine by me. Hey, you can't do this! And so, we decided the rules while Anna desperately tried to come in between us. The day of the rookies match. I was paired up with a freshman to play in the doubles tournament. However... I'm sorry, Hayato. I'm pulling you back. No, it's not you. I'm sorry my performance isn't the best today. The situation was looking bad. I was overworking my unhealed knee, and it was starting to throb. I... should have practiced more. Damn it. Don't worry about it. Your serve was impressive, you know. Hayato... And in the end, we lost. We did the best we could, but it wasn't good enough. To be honest, though, 
We did pretty well considering we only had three days to practice. <laughs> Loser! I can't believe you lost the first match after all the crap you said to me! Ryunosuke found us losing hilarious, and he laughed hard. He seemed happy that his plan worked. He had purposely set me up with a freshman so we would lose. All your hard work just went down the drain! Yep, we lost. Why aren't you upset? Whatever, you promised me you'll quit. You better keep it. Hmm? Just then, Anna came rushing toward me. She had just finished her match. Hayato, why won't you defend yourself? There's nothing to defend. I lost. Why aren't you angry? I'm so frustrated. Hayato, I know you worked so hard for this day. I've been watching you the whole time. I know you helped all the sub-members practice after everyone else went home. You even practiced with them in the mornings. And you just used up your lunch breaks to do the chores you couldn't finish during practice. Just so you could help the other sub-members practice. You did so much more than anybody in the club. You don't deserve this. Ryunosuke was right. Ayato is such a loser. After all he said about hard work and winning the competition, he lost the first match! Ryunosuke's friends started making disrespectful comments about me. Shut up! You don't know what Hayato has done for his teammates! You have no right to insult him like that! That's right! Hayato has been kind and supportive towards us! He taught us when nobody else cared for us! Outsiders should keep their mouths shut! Uh... Oh... Guys, stop! Why? You didn't do anything wrong, Hayato! I agree with Anna! This is so unfair to you! We need to do something! Hey, it's not over. We still have the singles tournament. What? Singles tournament? Coach didn't tell me you were playing in the singles tournament! You should check the list. You probably didn't realize it since you refer to everyone as dead waiters. When did you register? Uh, I just asked the coach to put me on the list. Jeez, whatever. There's no way you're winning the tournament since I'll be playing. Well, just make sure you don't lose before reaching the final match. Shut your mouth! You're just a sub! Hayato, are you sure you can win against him? Not at all. Not at all? But you'll have to quit the club if you don't win. I don't really care whether I win or not. Plus, I haven't given my 100% in a while, so I'm not sure. Uh, 100%? To be honest, I don't do so well when I play doubles since I lack experience. I'm better at playing one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, you'll see when I get out there. I'm not so good at explaining. Once the singles tournament started, I had to play with my injured knee, but I won every match, even the semifinals. What the heck? Yo, is that... Hayato? From Hideyama High School? He's known as the undefeated champion. I heard he was injured. That's why he wasn't in the Nationals. What? No. He can't be! Wow, Hayato... Anna? Is it just me, or do you have feelings for Hayato? I've had feelings for him since a long time ago. He's my first love, and I've fallen in love with him again. Yeah, I kind of thought so. The finals match. My opponent turned out to be Ryunosuke. Um, hey, do we really have to do this? What? You're the one who wanted this. But you're, well, you're Hayato from Hideyama High School. Your knee is injured, right? I'll apologize for my attitude and, and I'll make you a regular member. So, so can we just quit the game and make up? You said our team was a meritocracy, right? <coughs> Come on. Stop fooling around. Let's get started. I'll let you target my knee if you want. I won the match by a landslide. I was glad I won the competition, but my knee wasn't too happy. I know I was reckless, but I have no regrets. Now the Yuki Gakuen Boys Tennis Club won't be ruled by a tyrant. Things will be better now. Why didn't you tell me you were so talented? I'm not talented. I just worked hard for it. Plus, I hurt my knee and became a sub. 
I wasn't lying about anything. Ayato, why would you agree to do this when your knee is like that? Do you know how worried I was? Jeez! My bad. I couldn't think of any other way. And Anna? You're heavy. Don't say that word to a girl! A few days later, I became captain of the tennis club, and I changed all of Ryunosuke's rules. We all decided to build a powerful team where everybody had equal rights. I plan on coaching all the players. Anna introduced me to a famous sports medicine doctor, and he set me up with a great rehabilitation program to get me ready for the Nationals next year. Oh, and as for Ryunosuke... Ryunosuke! You said you want to get better! Stop slacking off! Ah! I'm sorry! Ryunosuke is a jerk, but he has talent. I gave him another chance to grow as a player, and as a human. Just so you know, this is not my way of getting revenge on him. Everyone on your team looks so lively. I am loving the energy vibe. Well, it's because Ryunosuke isn't ruling anymore. He seems to be changing little by little, and I'm hoping the team will too. You know, I'm so glad you came back, Hayato. Yeah, me too. Oh, here. I think this is yours. This is... the necklace I gave you. You still had it? Of course I kept it. I wanted to give it back to you when I got back. Aw, Hayato. You're the best! I'm looking forward to playing at the Nationals next year. I have a lot of work to do till then. As for Anna and me... Well, our relationship is just getting started. Hey, you dropped your handkerchief. Oh, thank you so much. Her name is Kotomi Ichise, and she's the prettiest girl in school. I picked it up to hand it over to her. <gasps> Get it away from me! I don't want to touch anything you touched! Okay, I wasn't expecting that. I have no idea why she hates me so much. But then again, the majority of the school population hates me, so I guess I'm used to it. Are you sure? It looks expensive. I don't want any delinquents talking to me. But I'm not a delinquent! I know why she called me that. It's because of my face. My name is Yuta Mizushima, and I've always been told I have a scary look on my face. So everyone seems to be scared of me. I recently heard a rumor about me. Apparently, I barged into a middle school nearby to beat up a group of punks. The truth is, I only went to the middle school to drop off my little sister's lunchbox. On the other hand, Kotomi is smart and pretty. <laughs> She's perfect in every way. She's equally kind to everyone, and is the most popular girl in school. However, she thinks I'm a bad person. She won't come anywhere near me. The only thing different from the others is that she's not the least bit scared of me. My mother advised me to volunteer at an after-school activity club near my house. I don't have any friends at school, but I want to become somebody who helps people in need when I grow up. I think this is a good place to start. Taking care of elementary school kids. Eight! Nine! Ten! Okay, here I come! Ugh, the monster is coming for me! <laughs> Do you realize you're hurting my feelings a lot? As you can see, the children call me the monster. Whenever we play heroes and villains, I'm always the he-who-cannot-be-named character. I'm glad my scary face is useful here. I have no complaints as long as the children are happy. Y yuta what are you doing here? Hi, um, well... You gotta help me! He's gonna rip off my fingers one by one! That's really gross! Kotomi came to pick up her little brother since her mother couldn't come. I'm surprised to see you here. I would have never imagined you to be volunteering to work here. Well, I wasn't expecting you to come. Oh no! Are you playing with the children here because you don't have a single friend at school? Cut it out! And stop looking at me like that! It hurts my feelings! I realized she misunderstood everything. I decided I should explain myself to her. So everybody has avoided me because of this face. It's not my fault. I've never been in a fight. I'm just an ordinary introvert. 
Well, you do have a scary face. Has anybody told you you're rude? I'm volunteering here because I want a job that can help people in need in the future. So, you want to become a hero? It's not like that. I just hope I can be someone people can come to when they need help. I know it'll be difficult, since people run away when they see my face. Uh, I'm so sorry. Why are you apologizing? I completely judged you by how you looked, and I said some things I never should have. I feel awful about it. You don't have to worry about it. It's strange how someone who looks so scary can be so kind. Is that an apology or an insult? I'm just kidding. Don't glare at me like that. I'm not glaring. This is my regular face. It felt nice to have somebody to talk about these things. Thanks to the coincidence, Kotomi started talking to me more at school. However... Um, can you stop talking to me when we're at school? Wait, why? I'm scared that people will start to notice. You're being self-conscious. Nobody is going to notice anything. Well, I can see a few heads turned towards us right now. They're looking at us. <laughs> Maybe they think we're a couple. No, I think our classmates are more worried about your safety. Hey, Katomi! You can't talk to Yuta like that! It's dangerous! See? They're all worried about... You don't have to be scared of him. I met him yesterday at... Stop! Eek, I'm sorry! What's wrong? You can't start yelling like that! I'm sorry, I freaked out. But you can't tell the others what I do! Why not? It's a nice opportunity for others to get to know the real you. Kotomi, you don't understand! What will people think when they hear the creepy guy with a scary face is volunteering at a children's after-school activity club? I see. You will become the most popular guy in school. I don't understand how your brain works, Kotomi. I realized Kotomi might be more of an airhead than I had expected. That afternoon, Kotomi followed me to the after-school activity club. Um, why are you following me? I'm going to go pick up my brother. Oh, okay. But we don't have to stick so close together, do we? We arrived at the activity club, and the children came to greet me. Hey, man! Let's go play tag! No! He promised to play house with me and the girls! Come on, guys! No fighting! Wow, you are so popular! Stop being sarcastic! It's annoying when it comes from the most popular girl in school! You're taking it the wrong way, Yuta. I just said what I saw. It's nothing else. Hey, Yuta! Who's this woman? Huh? Woman? Oh my gosh, Yuta! Don't tell me you've been cheating on me! Ch cheating I can't believe this, you cheater! <laughs> How could you do this to me? Wait, stop! Nothing's going on between us! I don't want to hear any excuses! Please, can you just hear me out? Is this her playing house? Katomi, it's your turn next. All right. <laughs> just as I expected. Kotomi is popular with the children. She hides her personality well with that pretty face. Gosh, playing with kids is more tiring than I thought it would be. I can't believe Yuta does this every single day. Yuzuki, don't you want to play with everybody else over there? Oh, no. That's too bad. <laughs> that girl, does she not get along with everybody? Thank you for carrying my brother home. Nah, it's not a big deal. How do you play with those kids every day? It's amazing. It's not that tiring once you get used to it. You know, you did quite well considering it was your first time with them. I know. I'm glad they liked me so much. I envy your people skills. It took a week for them to get used to me. Oh no, you're their first choice, no doubt. But I noticed a girl who didn't seem to be enjoying herself. You must be talking about Yuzuki. She's always been shy. She doesn't try to get to know people. She's shy, huh? 
Yuzuki doesn't like it when I talk to her. I don't know whether I should keep trying or if I should leave her alone. It's not like you to give up. Huh? That downbeat attitude doesn't suit you, especially your face. Don't bring my face into this! I'm just kidding. She needs to realize how much her comments hurt me! Yuzuki was watching you play with the other kids the whole time. I have a feeling she wants to get to know you better. Really? Well, I can try talking to her again. Yes, and I will be next to you rooting for you. Huh? Next to me? Yep. I feel it's my responsibility to be there for your emotional support. I didn't quite understand what she meant, but I was thankful for her support. I started talking to Yuzuki more, starting the next day. Yuzuki, do you want to hang out with me? No, I want to be alone. I tried to keep a positive attitude, but she was stubborn about wanting to be alone, which reminded me of myself. I wondered if I should pull back. Yuzuki, can I join in on the fun? Great! How about the three of us hang out? <gasps> what did I do wrong? Is it me or is she suddenly angry? I... I think I know why she's feeling that way. Do you not see it at all? I see. I guess you're too ignorant to see the obvious. Look who's talking, you rude airhead woman. I'm pretty sure Yuzuki is jealous of you and me. Jealous? It's kind of obvious. She has a crush on you, Yuta. What? She probably doesn't know how to talk to you since she has feelings for you. Th that can't be true! There have been no signs! There are plenty of signs. You should be able to tell if you just try to notice. Oh gosh! She's expecting me to notice communication signs when I've had no friends my entire life?! Oh, you girl killer! Dude! Don't ever call me that! Kotomi and I kept discussing what we should do to get Yuzuki to open her heart. She told me she had a good idea in mind. The next day... Yuzuki, can I ask you a little favor? What? Your mother told me you're good at drawing. Can you teach me how? Sure. Wow! You're awesome at this! Huh? Yuzuki, you've got raw talent! What's going on? Wait, who drew that picture? Yuzuki was teaching me how to draw. Look how talented she is. You're right. She's really good. It's pretty too. Yuzuki, can you teach me too? Me too. Uh, okay. I'm glad it went well. Me too. We were both relieved our plan had worked. Yuzuki is mature for her age so we thought it would be better to set her up with a younger age range. The next day at school... It was nice to see Yuzuki getting along with the other kids at the club. I know. It's all thanks to your plan, Kotomi. No, it's all you, Yuta. I thought of the idea while I was watching you. Well, I guess hanging out with younger kids is easier to do since there's less pressure. You should make some friends too. I like the way life is now. You're lying. I know you want friends. No, I don't! I'm willing to be your friend if you ask nicely. No thanks! As long as you pay me 500 yen a month. I have to pay you? Hey, that's really cheap! However, the peace didn't last forever. We went to the after-school activity club on Monday to find Yuzuki absent. I wonder what happened to Yuzuki. Maybe she got sick. I'm going to ask around a bit. Wait, I'll come with you! The kids told me Yuzuki was at school, but nobody had seen her at the activity club yet. I got worried and went out to look for her and... Is that Yuzuki? Wait, who are those guys? You got my clothes all dirty! It's gonna cost a hundred thousand yen to clean these! Are your mom and dad at home? If they are, introduce us. I'm sorry for ruining your clothes. I'm so sorry. What the? What do they think they're doing? She's still a kid! I grabbed one of the guys that were surrounding Yuzuki. Excuse me, do you have a second? What? Who the? What are you planning to do with that child? Should we get the police involved? Ah! 
It's a monster! Oh my gosh! What's up with his face? We shouldn't mess with him! We'll end up in the hospital! We'll be going now! What the heck? Oh well. They're gone now. Yuzuki, are you okay? Uh, I was so scared! There, there. I'm here now. You'll be okay. She seems terrified. I stroke Yuzuki's hair to calm her down. Hey, Yuta. Oh, Kotomi! Everything's under control now. H can you stroke my hair too? Huh? Why? Obviously I said no. The guys were gone and the problem was solved. Or so I thought. The next day, after school, Kotomi asked to see me. We headed up to the school roof since she had something important to talk about. You were so powerful when you saved Yuzuki from those guys yesterday. Oh, really? All I did was look at them. Not that. You barged in without any hesitation, even if it was against three guys. At first, I thought you were stupid, but then I realized your face was scary enough to make them run without having to do anything. Um, I don't know if you're complimenting or insulting me. Which is it? I was just desperate to save Yuzuki. I wasn't thinking about anything else. That's what I'm talking about. You don't hesitate at all when you're trying to protect those who are precious to you. Watching you made me realize how I feel about you. And I wanted to ask if you would be my boyfriend. What? My head blanked out. I was not expecting her to say that. To be honest, I don't hate Kotomi. But I don't know. Uh, what should I say? I want you to protect me as you did with Yuzuki. With your face. Why does everybody have to emphasize my face? If that's the reason, I'm going to say no! Protect yourself! I'm going to say no to you saying no. I want to go out with you. You're scary looking, but you love kids. And you're so reliable. This doesn't sound like a serious conversation. <gasps> oh no. You only like little girls, don't you? Cut it out! I just don't like you, that's all! You are such a jerk. Right back at you! Anyways, I decided she was rude and not worth my time. However, Kotomi didn't seem to understand my answer. She kept approaching me day after day. She would grab onto me during lunch, and she even started making obento for me. As for the other students in our class, they were... Did you hear about Yuta? Apparently he sent some guys to the hospital just by glaring at them! Look! He seems so annoyed that the prettiest girl at school is hitting on him! He's so cool! I want to be like him! Seeing the whole situation wrong! I just know they're going to add this event to the list of my fake achievements! As for the girls... I heard he even dumped Katomi! He's like a cool rebel! I love it! I love how he has a scary face, but he's so nice to kids. Maybe I should hit on him, or would he beat me up? I'm a cool rebel? Wait, I would never beat a girl up! I wasn't sure if I should be happy or sad about what everybody was saying about me. You know, I'm going to marry you when I get older. <laughs> Are you sure you want to live with this face? Huh? Your face is so handsome! I love looking at your face! It's the best thing to look at in the world! Nobody has ever told me I was handsome. Yeah. I guess I'm not ugly to everybody's eye. I'm so relieved. That's not going to happen, sweetie. Yuta is with me. I'm not losing to you, Altag. Oh, you're a little brat, aren't you? Stop it, Kotomi! You're supposed to be the adult here! And Yuzuki, why are you being so aggressive? As you can see, there's a lot I need to handle right now. My name is Yuji Kurosaka. I'm a sophomore in high school. I'm an anime geek in love with anime characters. I like to read novels during break time. I'm not the talkative type, and everyone considers me an introvert. One day, I was called up to the school rooftop. I'm sorry for asking you to come up here. I wanted to ask if you would be my boyfriend, Kurosaka-kun. This is Yuna Okazaki, 
the most popular girl in the school. But I already knew why she was asking me out. I didn't think I would ever be picked to be used for a Batsu game. I heard some girls talking with Yuna about asking someone out as part of a Batsu game. She seemed reluctant about the idea, but her friends wouldn't let her get away with not doing it. She's a victim as well, in a way. But this is a huge opportunity for me. I feel bad for Yuna, but it's her responsibility for hanging out with friends like that. She should have chosen her friends more wisely. Um, Kurosaka-kun? Are you going to give me an answer? Well... I'm an anime geek. Are you sure you're okay with that? Huh? Um, yeah. Of course I am. Okay, well... I guess we're dating then, Yuna. I called her name, and her expression changed into what looked like shock! You... just call me by my first name. I mean... we're dating, right? I thought couples called each other by their first names. It, yeah, but still... I didn't think you would call me that so soon. You can call me by my first name too, Yuna. Do you want to exchange numbers now? Yeah, sure. I made sure I didn't give her any time to change her mind about us dating. I haven't planned out when I'll tell her the truth yet, but I want to keep the boyfriend position as long as possible. It's my punishment for her since she's the one who wasn't honest to begin with. Hey, Yuna. Why don't we go on a date? I know a great place we can go to. Uh, wait a second! What's wrong? I grabbed her hand and started walking, but she suddenly pulled me back. Things are going a little fast for me. You're the one who asked me out, Yuna. I know I did, but you seem so different today. I'm a little surprised. Yuna... What kind of person do you think I am? You don't talk much. I thought you would be quiet and gentle. I don't talk to people because there are better things to use my time on. I like reading books, and talking to people will only get in the way. I didn't realize that. Are you having second thoughts now? No, of course I'm not! Well, let's get going then. Oh, okay. I would have set her free if she had come clean at that moment. However, it seems like Yuna wants to keep playing this little game. Um, Yuji, I thought we would be going to a cafe or something. I never said we would. You said you knew a great place. That's right, and I'm going to show you soon. I brought Yuna back to my place. I talked about my favorite anime the whole time we were walking. I could tell she was exhausted. I don't think she was actually listening to me. That's why she doesn't know what we're doing here. I didn't think we would end up at your place on our first date. You're my girlfriend. There's no problem with it, right? You came all the way here. It'd be a waste to just go home. What are you planning to do? I just want to talk. Just make yourself at home. I pulled Yuna's hand and guided her into my house. Wow. She looked extremely nervous until she drank the hot tea I served her. Right? It's my favorite kind of tea. Yuji, I never knew you had a thing for tea. I like baking and making desserts. Tea comes along with it. I made these cream puffs yesterday. Really? You actually made these? I think I'm pretty good. Tell me what you think. I didn't think anybody would ever get to eat the desserts I made. I'm glad I kept this in the fridge. This is delicious! You could probably sell this, you know? I spent a lot of time and effort perfecting the recipe. I never knew you were this talented. And I didn't think you'd be so forward on our first date. You're full of surprises. They say never judge a book by its cover. And they're right. You're nothing like I imagined. This isn't the only thing I'm good at. Here, let me show you. I decided to bring Yuna up to my room. What do you think about my room? I knew you liked anime, but this is more than I expected. Posters on the wall and character figurines all over. My room was full of anime and anime characters. Yuna, I have a favor to ask. Can you try this outfit on? I took a cosplay costume from my closet and turned around to show Yuna. Is this a Miko costume? Why do you have something like this? 
I love cosplay. I make all sorts of costumes and I sell them online. They sell well, to be honest. You're so talented. It's amazing. But I've never had the chance to get feedback from any of my customers. I would appreciate it if you could wear it and tell me how it feels. Huh? But it's... kinda embarrassing. You're my girlfriend. Can't you do this for me? Is this the reason you called me over today? To make me wear this? Of course. Yuna, you said you were okay with me being an anime geek. I thought you would be willing to help me. As expected of the school's most popular girl, Yuna had a beautiful face. I knew she could pull off any cosplay costume. That was one of the main reasons I agreed to go out with her. Okay, I'll get changed. Yuna still seemed a little reluctant, but she agreed to help me. I figured I should use her to my advantage, since she's still planning on tricking me. Great. Don't forget this wig, okay? I'll be waiting outside the room for you. I'm ready. Yuna called me into the room, and I opened the door. Wow! She stood there standing in the Miko costume and the pink wig. She looked like she had just come out of an anime, and she looked better than I had imagined she would. She was absolutely perfect. How does it look? Is it okay? You look great, just like the princess. Princess? The costume you're wearing is a Japanese ogre princess. She's not only pretty, but fierce as well. And she's one of the most popular characters in the anime. You'll look great in any pretty girl costume since you're so attractive. You're making me blush with all the compliments. Hey, is it okay for me to take a few pictures of you? I want to capture the moment so it doesn't fade away. Oh, sure. Go ahead. I'm glad she loved my compliments, and she looked quite satisfied. I asked her to pose for me, and we had a photo shoot. Look at these awesome photos. I wouldn't have been able to get this done if it wasn't for you. It's nice to hear you are happy with me. It was my first experience, but I think I like it. If you enjoy this, you might like learning about anime. You don't know the character you just dressed up as, right? The anime she's in is pretty interesting. I opened my laptop to show her some videos. I picked some of the best anime videos and we watched them together until it was time to go home. Good morning, Yuji. Yuna greeted me as soon as I walked into the classroom the next morning. Morning, Okazaki-san. Huh? Yuna looked shocked when she heard my reply. What's wrong? You just called me Okazaki-san. I thought we were using first names now. We're still dating? I thought our relationship was a one-day thing. Why would you think that? Did I do anything to upset you? We're still dating? I thought our relationship was a one-day thing. No, not at all. I just thought yesterday's going out thing was just a joke for you. You put me through all that yesterday just to end things like this? I tried so hard for you, Yuji! I had expected our relationship to be over since we had a date yesterday. However, Yuna didn't seem to think we were through. Maybe I should date her until she confesses the truth. I feel bad for making you dress up yesterday. I got too excited since I thought I would never get another chance to do that. It felt a little weird at first, but I actually enjoyed it. The anime videos were pretty interesting, too. I watched the rest of the anime after I got home yesterday. I couldn't stop watching. It pulled me in. Really? I didn't know you enjoyed it that much. I thought I was forcing you to watch it. I especially like the character I dressed up as. I wish someone had told me about anime sooner. So you enjoyed it? I know I'm the one who forced it on you, but I didn't expect you to like it so much. Yeah, animes are awesome, but I would love to have another one of your cream puffs. Do you plan on making any soon? I can make them anytime I want. You're welcome to come over after school tomorrow. I'll get them ready today. Really? Yay! I'm looking forward to it! I can't believe we're going on another date. She seemed excited, even though I showed her how much of an anime geek I was yesterday. She might just be putting on a nice face. I couldn't tell. I was a bit confused since I knew she only asked me out as part of a Batsu game. Hmm, 
It's so good! Yuna stuffed the cream puff into her mouth with a broad smile. I thought she would come clean about the Batsu game, but she didn't peep a single word about it. Instead, we got closer. We even started talking more at school. I'm so happy you like it so much. Yuji, you're amazing! I wish I could come here every day just to continue eating your cream puffs you make. That's quite a compliment. Yuji, is there anything I can do for you? I want to thank you in the way you enjoy the most. It's okay, don't worry about it. Oh, don't hold back. I'm your girlfriend. I didn't know how to react to her calling herself my girlfriend. I had made her dress up as a punishment for lying about her feelings, but it didn't seem to affect her that much. Well, you could wear another cosplay costume for me. The pictures I took of you were amazing. I would love to do that for you. I stopped thinking about it so hard and decided to enjoy myself. She was lying to me, but it didn't have to stop me from having a good time with anime-related activities. If she was willing to dress up for me, there was no reason for me to say no. You look absolutely amazing in that costume! I dressed her up in a blue coat and a blue wig. The character she was dressed up as was another character from the anime the Japanese ogre princess was in. She looked great at anything I put on her. I still can't believe you make all these costumes. I look exactly like the character. Now that Yuna started watching the anime, she knew which character she was dressed up as. She looked like she was enjoying herself. Do you ever wear costumes, Yuji? Sometimes. I used to make my costumes before I started selling them. I want to see you dress up. Now? Yeah. She seemed eager to see me in a costume, so I brought out a costume to wear. You're the Grand Master! Yuji, you look great! It was a simple white costume, but Yuna knew who I was. You're just flattering me. It makes me blush. But it's the truth! You look amazing! Now I understand why you wanted me to dress up. Watching others in costume is so fun too! You're becoming a fine anime geek, and you just started the day before yesterday. I'm a huge fan of the anime you introduced me to. After that, Yuna and I enjoyed a long conversation about the anime show. I was amazed by how Yuna knew so much about the anime already. A week passed since Yuna first asked me out. We talked a lot at school, and we'd become anime buddies. As for our relationship, well, that was still up in the air. Yuji? What's wrong? What are you thinking about? One day, on our way home, Yuna suddenly stopped me to ask what was on my mind. Well, the thing is... If there's anything I can help you with, let me know. I know the start of our relationship was a Batsu game, but I felt myself getting drawn to her as we spent more time together. I realized I was enjoying my time with her. I didn't want our relationship to end. However, I also knew our bond was based on a lie. It would be better to get rid of it if it wasn't real. Yuna, we're dating. Is that right? Huh? What is going on? Did I do anything to upset you? I know why you asked me out. When were you planning on telling me you're dating me as part of a Batsu game? I was glad I finally got that off my chest. Yuna looked at me with her mouth wide open. So, you knew. But, Yuji, I need you to know something. About what? I didn't want to do it. I didn't think it was okay to ask someone out just for a Batsu game. I know that too. You were trying to talk your way out of it. But I decided to go along with it because they said you were the one I had to ask out. I think I was drawn to you even before the whole thing. What do you mean, drawn to me? Yuji, you always read novels during break time. To tell you the truth, I love novels. I always wanted to talk to you about it. But you had this wall up around you and I couldn't. That's when the Batsu game came up. I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to get to know you. But isn't lying to me about being your boyfriend a little over the line? Didn't you think you would hurt me if I found out? I feel awful about it. I wasn't considering your feelings enough. I was planning to tell you the truth later on. But what I'm feeling now is much stronger. Enjoying cosplay, 
And talking about anime with you is so much fun! I was hoping we could just continue this relationship and become a real couple. But... We don't have to be a couple for that. Maybe you just want to be friends. We don't have to be a couple to spend time together. We could stay friends and still enjoy talking about anime together. I couldn't tell her true intentions, and it was confusing me. But I knew that I didn't want a relationship with her if she was just dating me out of guilt for lying to me. I don't expect you to believe me, but I do have feelings for you, Yuji. At first, it was just curiosity. But seeing all the wonderful sides of you, my feelings only got stronger. I want to stay as your girlfriend, so we can keep building our connection. You don't have to say that to make me feel better. I'm fine with us being just friends, too. No, I want to be your girlfriend! Yuna wrapped her hands around my face and slowly kissed me. I'm not doing this because I feel guilty. I actually have feelings for you. I'm willing to do anything to get you to believe me. Her cheeks were bright red, and she had a worried expression on her face. I... have feelings for you, too. You better not back out saying it was a lie after going this far. I'll never try to trick you ever again, Yuji. I want to be by your side. Yuna and I embraced each other. I heard later on that the Batsu game had ended a while back. Yuna had already explained her feelings to her friends, and they were aware that she had feelings for me. Everyone that was involved in the Batsu game came over to apologize to me. It cleared things up, and I was glad Yuna and I were headed in the right direction. A few months later... Whoa! So, this is what an anime convention is like! I took Yuna to an anime convention. She had turned into an official anime geek, and she was more excited to come here than I was! Yuna, when are you going to tell me what you are going to dress up as? I was hoping we could wear matching costumes to the convention. However, Yuna told me she had a plan. She kept her costume hidden from me until now. You'll see it soon. I know you'll love the costume I brought with me. Wait, please, don't wear something too revealing, okay? All the costumes I make are rather innocent looking. I've always stayed away from massive exposure since it's embarrassing to make. However, the bad feeling I had became a reality. Yuna came out of the dressing room in what could only be called a character bathing suit. It was a costume of one of the characters in our favorite anime, a young demon king. One of the costumes I had been avoiding making on purpose. What do you think, Yuji? Is your heart racing? Yuna, you went all out, huh? My heart was racing, but I was worried about the other anime geeks watching her in that costume. However, Yuna didn't seem to mind the attention at all. Yuna became a popular cosplayer almost immediately, and she was surrounded by many cameras. I'll admit, I was a bit jealous, but I guess it's something I have to deal with. My name is Mitsuru Minagawa. I'm a junior in high school. My father and I have lived together for most of my life, but he recently remarried. Good morning. Good morning, Mitsuru. My stepmother is kind and beautiful. I'm glad my father found such a perfect partner. However... Morning! Hmm... Hello? You listening? Hmm... <laughs> Her daughter, or my stepsister, is glacial. The only thing they have in common is that they have a pretty face. Her name is Minato Minagawa, and she is the most difficult stepsister anybody has had to deal with. As you can see, we don't have the most healthy relationship. I'm leaving. Wait, Minato! I'm almost done getting ready. Want to go to school? No way. <sighs> I'm so sorry, Mitsuru. I don't know why she's so grumpy all the time. Oh no, don't worry about it. I guess it can't be helped. I mean, I would freak out if I found out I would suddenly be living with a brother only a year older than myself. Not that I agree with how she's handling it, but I get how she's feeling. Hey, wait up! What do you want from me? Stop following me! That's impossible. We, we leave the same house to go to the same school. Then move, or transfer to a different school. You're really something, you know? I take it back. I don't understand her. Why does she treat me this way? I'll see you later then. Hmm. Don't come near me. It's annoying. 
You won't make any friends like that. It's none of your business. Go away. Jeez. Minato and I go to the same high school. But I didn't know her previously since we were a grade apart. I didn't even know she existed in the same school until my father married my stepmother. I found out the day she came to our place. None of my friends seemed to know her either. She was a mystery. Hey. You're here to bother me again. What, are you alone? Do you have eyes? Why bother asking the obvious? I looked for her during my lunch break and finally found her sitting alone on the school roof. As it turns out, I'm not the only one who she acts cold towards. She doesn't have a single friend. She's always alone whenever I see her at school. What did you come here for? Well, I was wondering if you wanted to eat together. No, I like being by myself. Throw me a bone, will ya? Why do you even bother talking to me anyway? I'm so mean to you. We're part of the same family now. Is it weird that I want to find a way to get along with you? We're family on paper, not connected by blood. Leave me alone. <sighs> Don't be so blunt about it. I'm just saying the truth. All I need is my mother. I don't need anything else. I understand your love for your mother, but do you have to shut the rest of the world out? It's not that I'm trying to shut everybody out. Then why? I can't trust anybody, not a single person in the world. Huh? My father. He cheated on my mother and tossed us out like trash. We were such a happy family. My mother and I loved him so much. He showered us with love every day, too. I'm sure he loved us. But our family ended in a matter of seconds. It was like he was a different person. That's when I realized love and trust were just illusions. Just because your father did that doesn't mean we're all the same. I know. But who knows which one of you will turn out to be that way. If my real father can change like that, anybody can. Minato... That's why I don't want to trust anybody. If I don't trust, there's no betrayal. I won't give anybody the chance to hurt me. Huh? Talk time is over. Now that you know how I feel, I'm sure you understand why it's a waste of time to talk to me. If there's no trust, there's no betrayal, huh? The girl's got a point, I know, but still. That's just so... It's so heartbreaking to hear. Okay, we're heading out now. A few months after our parents' marriage, they decided to go on their honeymoon during summer break so it wouldn't affect our studies. I'm sorry for leaving you guys to take care of yourselves. It's okay, don't worry about us, we'll be fine. Hmm. Are you sure about that? Uh, yeah, I think. Make sure you call us if anything happens, or if you can't take it anymore. Please, go have fun. Oh... Thank you, Mitsuru. Whew, let's see. Minato, we're on our own for a week. Let's make the best of it. You want to go out for dinner? <sighs> I'll be lying if I say I'm not worried at all. Hey, come on out, let's go dinner. Are you sleeping, Minato? <sighs> it's only been four hours since our parents left for their honeymoon. Minato hasn't stepped out of her room since. It's starting to get late. I'm sure she's hungry. We should eat something. I, I, I made dinner for you, and it's getting cold. Shut up. Eat it without me. Hey, you're awake. Come on out. No. Why not? Please. It won't be as bad as you think. I said no. Oh, you are so stubborn. You're the stubborn one. I told you why I don't want you to annoy me, but you still do it. Because we're family. Stop saying that! You're irritating me! Well, it's the truth. You follow me to school every single day, and you're making lunches for me now. Plus, you keep talking to me about meaningless things every minute we're together. Aren't I fun? No! Why won't you just leave me alone? I really need you to stay away. If you keep doing that, I'll... <sighs> Uh-oh. I must have fallen asleep without realizing it. She still hasn't eaten her food. I know she's starving. Why won't she just eat? Hey, Minato! Are you sleeping? 
I'm gonna leave your plate outside your door since you didn't want to eat with me. Hmm. I can't hear a thing. Is she really sleeping? Minutel? Hello? What? The door isn't locked? <gasps> oh no. Where? The number you have dialed is outside the service area or... Crap! An hour passed since I first realized Minutel was not at home. I called her numerous times, but none of the calls have gone through. Ugh. I looked at the clock and realized it was already past one o'clock. It's too late for a girl in high school to be walking around alone. What if she's been in an accident? Or something? It's none of my business. D whatever, just let her do her thing. She doesn't have any friends to rely on anyways. She'll be back soon since there's no way she can go. She probably shut off her phone to avoid me on purpose. She's having a blast while I'm sitting here at home. I can't trust anybody. Not a single person in the world. Huh. Damn it! I can't help it. I can't stop worrying about her. <sighs> what the heck am I doing? Out here? I don't have anywhere to go. I left the house without getting prepared or anything. I wouldn't have had to if it wasn't for Mitsuru. I've made my feelings clear, but he won't let me be. How could he be so kind to me when I am being so mean to him? And why is he always smiling at me like nothing is wrong? Why? Won't you just go on with your life? It would be so much easier if he minded his own business and stopped caring for me. I wouldn't have to push him away so much if he kept his distance from me. He just doesn't get it. Hey, you're alone, aren't you? <gasps> you must be feeling so lonely. Why don't we go buy you a drink over there? <laughs> Back off! Don't you dare talk to me! Whoa, somebody's cranky! Well, that we're complaining, we like strong women. <laughs> what? S stop! Don't come near me! Look how beautiful you are! You're perfect! Something seems to be bothering you! We should blow off some steam together if you know what I mean. <laughs> what do I do? There's two of them! And there's nobody around I can ask for help. Excuse me, could I butt in for a second? <gasps> huh? What do you want? I'm your older brother. I would appreciate it if you could pick up some other girl. I don't want any drama with you, bud. Whatever, let's go. Whew. Why are you here? Let's go home. Hey, wait! Huh? Uh, hey... What? Were you looking for me this whole time? Yeah. Why would you do that? I told you to leave me alone. I know I'm only trouble for you. How could I do that? You have no idea how worried I was about you. Don't say that. I don't want to believe you. I said I don't want to believe you. But you keep making me doubt my decision and it's confusing me. Huh? Betrayal is never easy. It's painful and scary. <gasps> but I also think not being able to trust others is just as painful. It's your life, and you're the one who has to make your decisions. Hmm. Make my own decisions? You've got to be kidding me. You've made it clear I have no control over my decisions on whether I trust you or not. Huh? What does that mean? Shut up! Stop asking me questions, idiot! The next day. Yes, these are great! I'm so good. Minato, it's morning! Let's have breakfast together. Hmm. What? Why are you surprised? Well, I wasn't expecting you to open the door. You must be stupid. You were the one who called me. But, well, yeah, but... Come on, we're eating, right? Let's go downstairs. Oh, okay. I almost forgot. Good morning, Mitsuru. What? Why are you so quiet? Cat got your tongue? I mean, what? Did you just call me Mitsuru? We're family. What's wrong with it? Or do you want me to call you Big Bro or something? No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> you weirdo. You're the one who calls me Minato all the time. 
Oh, we're family, huh? I didn't know she was capable of saying such sweet things. After that... Okay. Where are you going? I need to go grocery shopping. I'm going with you. The way Minato treated me did like a complete 180. So, um... What? Do you have to hold on to my shirt like that? It's kind of hard for me to walk. You're such an idiot. What will we do if we get separated? How old are you again? She was a completely different person. Is there anything I can help you with? No, nah, I'm okay. Go take a nap or something. No, I want to help you, Mitsuru. Oh, um... Well, can you cut the carrots for me then? Okay, I got this. I'm finished. Oh, thanks, Minato. <laughs> so, I did a great job, didn't I? Huh? Oh, yeah, you did great. Hmm. Huh? I need you to give me more. M more? Yep. Um. Hmm. Hmm. There, there. <laughs> How can you be so cute? You're like. Huh? A puppy, you know? You moron. I'm a human, can't you see? Nah, she looks like a puppy to me. Fine then, if I'm a puppy. Hmm? That means you picked up a stray dog and are responsible for taking good care of me. A stray dog? Up until a few days ago, she was like a stray dog, barking and trying to bite anyone near her. I agree with her. I have to take good care of her so she doesn't lose hope in humanity. Hmm. The fifth day of spending time alone with Minato. Our parents are coming home the day after tomorrow. I don't know how I did it, but I seem to have succeeded in building a trusting relationship with Minato. I think I'm doing okay, Mom. My mother always taught me to cherish the connections with people. I cried every day while my mother was sick in the hospital. I was terrified of the day she would pass away. I used to think it would be so much easier if I didn't make any connections with anybody if they were going to be gone someday anyways. I was traumatized from watching my mother wither away. However, I now know that's not true. Even if I had to say goodbye to my mother, I never felt like I should have met her. I still cherish all the memories I have with her. <sighs> I should start getting ready for bed. Hmm. But what? I can't believe you made me wait for so long. What do you think you're doing? I'm trying to sleep. Well, yeah, I can see that. Then don't ask, you idiot. Why does she talk to me like this? I'm not talking about that. Why are you trying to sleep in my bed? Hmm. Don't <clears throat> me. Go back to your room, Minato. No. Did you say no? I can't fall asleep. Huh? I tried sleeping in my bed, but my heart keeps stirring up. I couldn't fall asleep. Oh. So, um, I wanted to sleep here. Just for tonight. Uh... Can I? Just for today. Oh, okay. Huh? Hmm... Damn it, my heart is beating so fast. I know I said it was okay for her to be here, but I'm still a regular high school guy. I mean, we're siblings, but not related by blood. Isn't this a little inappropriate? I'm sorry for this. What? You're the first person I've trusted other than my mother since my father left us. I'm terrified of losing you. Oh, huh. I get anxious at night. What if I wake up one day and you're gone? You're the one who ran from home. Sh shut up! You're the one who loved for me all night, so you better watch out for me. I know. Don't worry, I'll never disappear on you, I promise. Really? You better not be lying. I'm trusting you. I know. By the way, you can't get married. What? What did you expect? If you get married, you'll have a new family. You won't want me around anymore. Isn't that going a little too far? Oh, no. Don't tell me you want to get married. Well, I mean, not now. But maybe in the future. Mm, fine, then. I'll marry you when you are ready. Huh? That way we can get married, and we can stay together. <laughs> Miano, stop reading so much and talk to me. My name is Jun Miano, and I'm a junior in high school. 
I'm not good at talking to people, so I always spend my time reading books alone. Then suddenly, my classmate, Nao Takahashi, started talking to me. Leave me alone. Huh? I couldn't hear you. Can you speak up? I felt like I was being pretty loud, but when I'm in front of people, I get nervous and mumble. People would always make fun of me for that, but after Miss Takahashi started sitting next to me, she started teasing me more. You're never going to be popular like that. You need to speak up. I don't want to be popular. I said I can't hear you. If you have something to say, speak up. No, stop messing with that geek. You really do like strange things. What's so fun about talking to that weirdo? Her friends were making fun of me too. I was just getting smaller by the minute. Look, Miano, they're talking shit. Say something back. Leave me alone. I can't hear you. <laughs> no, let's go. Huh? Okay. She was dragged away by her friends. I tried to speak up, but I couldn't say anything that would reach her ears. Man, I can't do this. When people are around, I just get quieter. I should just quietly read a book. I was just avoiding reality, but that was what I did to protect myself. All right, let's go for it. I had a secret hobby. I used a streaming app to live stream with only my voice. I didn't have to talk to people when I saw them, so I loved my place in the internet. If they can't see me and I can't see them, I can talk like normal. I was working hard as a streamer. Good afternoon, guys. I'm Miyachi, here to deliver you your favorite voice. I'm working hard to become a voice actor, so I would like you all to give me scripts to speak while I'm streaming to practice. I started live streaming last year. I was an anime otaku, so I would use certain famous or popular lines to introduce myself and gathered attention that way. It took me a year to gather my listeners, but they liked me. I'm always rooting for you. I love your voice. Naomin is here today too. I had a lot of regulars, but Naomin was someone who was there from the beginning, always interacting. Thank you for your support as always, Miss Naomin. Let's get started. The stream continued as usual. The more time I spent practicing, the more I started getting used to new and different situations. So I started improving my skill. They really enjoyed it. All right, Miano, you read the next part. I was chosen to read during language arts class. I was depressed, but I started to read the excerpt. We can't hear you. Speak up, man. I was reading as best as I could, but my voice was just quiet. Right on cue, my other classmates started making fun of me. You really aren't good at this, Miano. You should start taking this seriously. I am taking it seriously. I can't hear you from here. I want you to really speak from your stomach. Put your feelings behind it. I was able to speak like it was nothing while I was live streaming. I didn't know why I can't talk when I'm in front of people. I pretended that I was live streaming to try to get past this. I pretended this classroom was my room and spoke. Your heart has been moved from the clasps of love already. Ah, you can do it. Make sure you speak up like that every time. I said the line as if I was reading an anime line and got through reading the excerpt. I was exhausted after being so nervous. He spoke. I think it's the first time I've heard him talk. I heard people whispering. I changed my tone, but people had never heard my real voice, so I'm sure they didn't think much of it. Miyano, let's go home together. Why? Don't be like that. I just have something I want to talk to you about. Come on. After class, Takahashi invited me to go home with her. I'd never gone home with anyone, so I didn't understand why. I don't have anything I want to talk about. Oh, you're okay with it? Okay, let's go. I didn't say that. I said no, but she didn't listen to me. I couldn't speak up, so she used that to her advantage to go home with me. Miyano, why are you so quiet normally? It's not like I try. I can hear you mumbling something, but I can't hear most of what you're saying. That was special. When I pretended the textbook was a script, I was able to speak up. I just did what I did at home. However, I was still nervous speaking in front of people. 
I want to hear your voice again. I'm literally talking. Miyano, you're Miyachi, right? Huh? I was surprised when she mentioned my streamer tag. How did she know? Ah, oh, look at you being all surprised. I knew it. Why do you know, you might ask? It's because I'm Naomin. No way. I didn't realize one of my biggest fans was someone so close to me. And Naomin is actually one of my oldest fans, too. That would explain how she was able to figure out my voice. I seriously have a huge voice fetish, and I'm a huge fan of your voice. So I heard your voice during class, and I was so surprised. I didn't realize the Miyachi I was always cheering for was so close to me. Sorry, this is normally how I am. When I said something, she immediately rushed close to me and put her ear near my mouth. I was taken aback and walked away a little. What? If I do this, I can hear your voice. Don't worry about it. No matter how you are regularly, I'm a huge fan of yours so I could hear you talk. Can you come by my house then? I was a little anxious inviting her to my house like that, but I wanted to be in an environment where I could relax. I had her come with me. Thank you for always supporting me. I really appreciate your support. Oh, I'm the one that's always lucky to hear your voice. You don't have to thank me. I was still nervous, but I felt a little relieved being in a familiar environment. I was able to talk a little louder than I could at school. I just get so nervous in front of people that I can't really talk. When I'm live streaming, I don't have to worry about it because I don't have to see anyone's face. When there are other people, I get really nervous, and I know you wanted to talk to me. I wasn't ignoring you, so... sorry. I could tell you were trying to talk. I couldn't hear you well. But I feel bad about this. Your voice while you livestream is so nice, so you should be able to show off at school. I know it's not good to just be this way, but I can't do anything about it. When I'm talking, people don't hear me, and then it makes me even more nervous and... eventually... I end up just avoiding people at all. So, you're saying if you can't talk, you can't get along with people? Yeah, if I can do that, I guess I could. Then let's practice. If you get used to talking in front of people, you'll be able to talk like when you live stream. It's not that easy. I've tried a lot over the years, but I've never been able to talk. That's because you haven't tried correctly. I'll help you. How do you plan to help? First, let's start with you breaking the ice with me. I want you to talk a little louder. I'm trying to talk loud now. You're talking a little louder than when you talk at school, but I think you can be louder. If you're nervous because you're looking at me, I'll turn around for you. She turned her back to me. I couldn't see her face, but it didn't matter because I knew someone was near me. I'm glad you're trying to help, but it doesn't make much of a difference. I'm nervous about the presence of someone, so... It's not like not looking at your face makes me less nervous. You can't talk to your family either? No, I can talk to my family. I don't need to worry about what they're thinking. Ah, so you don't have problems when it comes to someone you don't have to worry about then. She came behind me and hugged me from behind. What are you doing? She suddenly hugged me and my heart rate spiked. It was the first time a girl had hugged me. I'm going to get close to you so that you don't have to worry about me. Let's go out. What the? Why? I told you I like your voice. If I do this, I can listen to your voice anytime I want, and you can practice talking too. I think it's a win-win. That doesn't mean that we should go out! You don't like me? It's not about liking or disliking. I can't even talk to anyone. How am I supposed to date? If you don't dislike me... Then why don't we at least give it a shot? Not going out just because you're nervous is sad. I won't be mean, I promise. I'll make sure you can talk in front of people. Uh, I didn't agree with how she was doing it, but I knew I had to fix this situation. If it was for me to fix my flaws, maybe this was okay. Okay then. Then let's go out. Yeah, leave it to me. We started going out while also training. All right, read this line to me. She showed me her phone with a certain line on it. Aren't these anime lines? Why are you doing this? 
Well, I figured if we start off reliance that you're used to, it would be easier for you. Just do it like you usually do on the live streams. I've never said any anime lines when someone was around. That's why it's practice. This is for your voice. It was like a public recording. If I just practiced talking, then it would probably help me out. She was the only person around, but I was still nervous. But if I can't do this, I won't be able to change. Okay, I'll give it a shot. I took a deep breath and imagined the situation with the anime characters. I played the part and put emotion behind the lines. My life is yours. I will use it for you. I will be by your side till the end. I was exhausted after saying it. Maybe being nervous actually paid off. I was able to speak up. Oh my god, I can hear Miyachi's voice, Ra. This is amazing! Miss Takahashi? Yeah, you had a great voice. And we learned that you could say anime lines normally. Wait, are you using this training as a way to hear my voice? Not at all. It's easier this way for you too, right? This is the perfect idea. I mean, maybe, but... Whether it was effective or not, I felt like she was using me. She told me to say more anime lines before moving to the next step. Okay, this next line. What is this? I wasn't familiar with the lines she had showed me on her phone. It's just a scenario. I just made it up, so I'll put some emotion behind it and read it. I can't read this! It's embarrassing! You can get over that kind of embarrassment to really grow. Just think it's an anime line. Ugh. I buckled down and said what was on the phone. I've always liked you since I've met you. Please date me. Oh my god, yes! She hugged me. Wait, what are you doing? After I said the confession, she hugged me, and I couldn't help but blush. I was just amazed by that line. You made me say it. Still, I was moved. I love you. This is how my training, while also being Miss Takahashi's toy, started. Thank you for listening, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow. I finished my daily live stream. Miyano, it was great! Thank you. She was in my room while I was streaming. I had never shown anyone my live streams, but because of our daily training, I started getting used to her presence. I was able to have her stick around because I got used to her. You've really grown! You're not nervous around me anymore! Yeah, you've been making me do things. She used my legs as a pillow. I pet her head gently. You even pet my head without me saying anything. You literally told me to do that. She said it was part of the training to act all flirty, too. She would hold my hands and hold me. At first I was nervous, but I was able to really overcome my fear of being around her. All right, let's try something new. She pulled up the blanket and got into my bed. You come in here, too. What are we going to do in bed? It's just a cuddle nap. I mean... If it's just a nap. If it was just napping next to her, I'd be okay. But once I actually got into the futon, I was nervous for a different reason than usual. The special situation actually made me think of... things. Maybe I'll just stay the night. No, you need to go home. You don't want to spend the night with me? I don't want anything happening. You plan on doing something to me? I didn't mean that! My imagination ran wild. She hugged me as if to make me more nervous. What if I said you can do whatever you like with me? Uh, what? I thought maybe you'd want to do something to me. You want me to? If you like me, sure. I heard her, and I finally said what was on my mind. I'm really happy that you like me, but you like my voice, right? What about the other stuff? I knew you weren't sure about how I felt. I kind of figured. No matter how much we were snuggling, you kept saying it was just training. That was the reason we started this, so... I mean, at first, sure, it was your voice, but not anymore. Right now, I like all of you, and I can give you everything I have for you. I see. I was pretty shy that she would like me that much. What about you? What do you think about me? 
Well, we started dating under the pretense of training, but I really did start falling for you. We were only dating because of my voice, so I was worried about what would happen if you got bored. But if you aren't bored of me, then I want to be with you forever. Then let me hear your confession again. Not something I thought of, but something you came up with. Everything that I had told her up until this point had been lines that she had made me say. Just like I was worried about how she felt, she must have been worried about how I felt. I realized why she did what she did. I want you to be by my side from now on. I love you now. She kissed me on the lips. I love you, June. She smiled happily. I wasn't able to speak up at school yet, but after this happened, I was able to speak up anywhere. I knew if she supported me, I could get over anything. Thank you for watching. How was today's video? Please check out our other videos as well.